Hi, and welcome to this Fornav webinar. Uh, my name is René Brummel. I'm a product specialist at Fornav, and I will be your presenter today. As this coffee break is live, you can ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question window. We will answer them at the end of the coffee break. Today, we're going to add freight and other subtotals to your business central reports. To demonstrate adding subtotals to your business central reports, we will, we will make changes to the sales template from the Fornav customizable report pack. We will use JavaScript variables to temporarily store our freight information so we can place it in the subtotal footer. The techniques we demonstrate today are valid for any Fornav report and any extension. To demonstrate adding freight and other subtotals to your business center reports, I'm going to use these steps. Prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step two, I will store my freight information. In step three, I will add freight to the line's footer. In step four, I will hide the original freight line. Let's start with the first step. Today, I will be adding subtotals in the Business Central on-premise Docker installation with the Business Central 2021 Wave 1 release. I have installed the Fornav customizable report pack and I have executed this step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. Of course, everything I do today is also available on the Business Central cloud environment. I also have the Fornav designer installed on my PC. The Fornav designer can be downloaded from the Fornav website. The first thing we need to do to place the freight in the subtotals is to store the freight value in a JavaScript variable. In JavaScript, we can, use a, we can use an object type variable. That's a nice way to keep all of our freight stuff together. So first thing, of course, is we need to figure out what we need to store. So we'll log into Business Central and we'll have a quick look at one of the posted invoices in this system. It's just a plain demo database, nothing uh, nothing special about it. And I've created a new invoice, which is this one. And this invoice, if I go to the lines, it has two item lines and a general ledger account for my shipping. So it's this shipping, shipping line that I want to display in the footer instead of the lines. So what I need to remember is that it's a general, general ledger account line with number 8240. So that said, I will open my report in the Fornav Designer. So I'll find my standard reports and I'll find my sales template and open it. So in the sales template, I need to determine where I need to write my JavaScript to store the variables. And that of course is in the line data item. The line data item has two JavaScript triggers, the on data item and the on after get record. So what we'll do in the on data item is declare the variable. So what I will do is open the JavaScript editor and sim simply type var shipping is description. is an empty string and amount is zero and I add zero to the amount because then I can add my amounts to it. So that's my variable and then in the on after get record so every time a record is read from the database I want to check if that record is a shipping line and if it is a shipping line then I want to store the variables so I'm going to say if line dot type is line dot field options dot type dot gl account and of course I don't want to store every gl account I want to store the specifics so say line dot number is a240, which was the uh, uh, the general ledger account that my shipping is posted to. And if that is true, then I want shipping.description 
to be filled with the line dot description. I want to I want shipping dot amount. I would like the line dot line amount, and I use plus is in this uh, in this particular line. Because if I have multiple shipping lines, of course, I want to calculate the total of uh, uh, of the amount. So I want to add it to the, to my uh, to my running subtotal. So there we go. If line type is GL account and line number is eight two four zero, then my shipping stuff will be filled. So now we have the values for our shipping lines, we can add a new footer with the freight details. We will make a new footer so we can hide it when we don't have any shipping costs. So back to the 4 now designer. In the 4 now designer I'm going to add a new footer section. And I want to place this above my, uh, my lines footer, above my current subtotal. And I will call this one the freight footer. And on this freight footer, uh, let's copy some stuff from the normal footer because I would like to have the subtotal and the amount on this footer. And then of course, I want two new text boxes for my freight information. And in these new text boxes, I'm going to say, there we go, in the JavaScript er editor. I can use my shipping variable and on the first one, I want my shipping dot description. And in the second text box, of course, I want my shipping dot amount variable. And finally, just before we're done, of course, my subtotal amount here is the subtotal for the entire invoice. So if I want a a correct and working subtotal amount, I need to use the, uh, the subtotal amount minus the shipping amount. So I will open the source expression for this text box. And I can simply subtract the shipping dot amount. So that gives us our new freight footer. On the new freight footer, we have the subtotal, which is the uh, the invoice subtotal minus the shipping amount, and then we have the shipping amount. And below the the, the freight footer, the normal lines footer will be displayed with the normal uh, full subtotal. So let's save this and have a look if this all works. Let's preview with our invoice with shipping. So there we go. We have, we still have our shipping on the in the lines because we haven't hidden it yet. Uh, but we do have a subtotal, and the subtotal contains my shipping description and my shipping amount, and it gives me the subtotal minus the, the shipping shipping amount. So that's on a, on an invoice with shipping. Uh, let's check an invoice without shipping. So let's preview this again. Let's choose this invoice, which is a similar invoice, but this invoice does not have any shipping. And you will notice that I don't have a shipping line because obviously it doesn't exist in the database. But Fornav now does give me my uh, my shipping footer, uh, but there's nothing to display. The shipping amount is zero, and uh, the shipping descri description is empty. So what we'll need to do is hide the shipping footer when uh, when there isn't any shipping information, and hide the shipping line when we print the shipping footer. So let's go back to Fornav. In order to hide lines or display lines, we need to play with the show output property. Every Fornav uh, control on the report has a show output property. And with the show output, we can determine what gets hidden and what gets 
shown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my if statement right here. This if statement says this uh, this uh, JavaScript expression says uh, returns true if this line uh, is uh, a freight line. So that's obviously the uh, the expression I want to use only when I use the show output. I select my line's body and open the show output in my JavaScript editor. The show output needs to return either true or false. And I want to hide this line when my expression is uh, is true, which means I need to invert it. So I'm going to say hide the line when the line type is uh, field options GL account and line number is 8240. For my freight footer, of course, I want to hide this when I do, when I want to display this when I have uh, something to display. So for this show output property, it's pretty simple. I can simply say shipping dot amount is not zero. So if the shipping amount is not zero, obviously I have uh, I have shipping, uh, which means I want to display this footer. So let's preview this one to see if it works. So let's start with our shipping invoice. There we go. On our shipping invoice, the shipping line is hidden. And now I have my uh, shipping subtotal with, uh, with the matching subtotal and the shipping cost and a matching uh, total invoice subtotal. And then, of course, we need to test this with our invoice without shipping because on that invoice we want to hide the shipping totals. So let's grab that one and preview it. Now on this invoice, uh, I don't have a shipping line and I don't have any shipping subtotal either because I don't have any, any shipping costs. So let's recap what we just did. First thing we did was to store our shipping information in a JavaScript variable. We chose to use an object type variable to keep all, our, all of our shipping information together. Once we had the shipping information, we created a new footer to display it on the report. Finally, we used the show output properties of the sections to hide the shipping lines uh, or our shipping totals. So thank you for listening to me so far. I can see we have a question. So let me open the, uh, the question window. Uh, Andre asks, good morning, when is the new JavaScript editor available? Uh, that's going to be shipped in 4.0.6.1, uh, which will be out in the next uh, few months. So we don't have any further questions. So let's wrap up this webinar. If you want to know more about Fornaf, please visit fornaf.com where you can also download the Fornaf designer. And if you want to use Fornaf in uh, Business Central Cloud, you can install it from the Microsoft App Source. If you want to watch more videos about Fornaf, please visit our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions after watching this video, please send them to support at fornaf.com. We'll continue our four and a half coffee break format and for a full list of upcoming and recorded coffee breaks, please visit fournaf.com slash coffee break. Uh, with that, we don't have any further questions. So thank you very much for watching and I will speak to you in the next coffee break. Goodbye.